this has been a, a week um, uh, that you, that we've all kind of waded through in in various various ways. And through, throughout this week, I've carried this Willing, Willie Jennings quote, uh, who's a professor at Duke, um, who said that Christian faith claims the power of life together precisely at the site of threat and fear. Um, I'm constantly aware that as we talk about next steps uh, about our community, about what has drastically changed uh, in our world, but also the type of church that we are in a very, as we know, a very conservative uh, evangelical um, county, and that we are a very different expression um, of church in this place. And so I think about this, uh, Christian faith claims the power of life together precisely at the side of threat and fear. When the world isn't all as it should be, that is the very place that the church continues to um, endure. Um, the lectionary text was kind of ominous, and it's very interesting when you read Advent texts, um, lectionary texts that they're not all Jesus stories, that some of them are Jesus like uh, speaking into the future and that it's not a very like welcoming vision of the future and so it like con- contrasts to like our our like Christmas like happy, smiley and then we're reading stories about Jesus saying the world will end and uh, we're trying to like reconcile and that's the kind of passage that this is um Jesus is saying to his disciples, the way forward is not easy. Um, In fact, it is hard, and you will be hated, despised, and you will suffer, and most likely die. And I'm captured by the last line, but not a hair of your head will perish. That's a lie. Um, Just kidding. See, that joke fell. I was really working on that one all week long. Like, surely it'll go. Um, (laughs) Whew. Glad I'm a pastor. Um, By your endurance, you will gain your souls. So Jesus speaks all these things. That the way forward is hard, but by your endurance, will gain your souls. Um, This journey that we are on as a community, as a church, and as individuals is uh, is about endurance. A word that means the ability to last through suffering and pain. Can I last through suffering and pain? Um, Krishna is not in here, but as you all know, Krishna is a runner, like a real runner. You know, some of us are like, yeah, I run like once a year. Uh, No, Krishna is a real runner. So I bet she could speak to this really well. Um, She knows um, endurance well. Um, And that means running means being able to, to like, my body is saying it is in pain, but my brain is saying just get through the suffering. Like, get through the pain, keep going, fight through through it. And so that becomes endurance. And endurance, as you run, builds over time. Like, the pain is a little less, and so you can go longer. Um, so today, I want to take a moment to talk about how we as a community might continue uh, to endure. Um, we have endured a lot in our existence together. We have evolved. We have learned together. And we will take our next steps together. And the, the reality about our future is that, the, well, our past has not been easy. And our future will not be easy. And so the question becomes, how much are we willing um, to endure on this great journey? I am, I am, um, I'm really encouraged at the essence of when I go back to those first moments of talking about this church to people um, uh, and hearing authentic- the words authenticity and to hearing that, you know, if you, that we strive to welcome people, like really welcome people and not, not just say it, but to actually like to hear those words and to hear friendship as like the defining characteristics of how I describe people in this community uh, is a beautiful, beautiful um, testament um, to this church and the kind of church that we want. Um, As we think about our year, uh, this past year as a church and individuals, uh, we have endured. 
when you think about our year just as human beings, each year of our life, um, let's go around the room, say our ages. No, just kidding. But each year of our life, as we go through our lives um, and you reflect, there are years in our life where there is some amount of loss, there is some amount of success, there is some amount of contentment. Um, or, or, or mental stress. Like there's some amount of all those things in each of our years. In some years, uh, there's a lot more of, of the other. Some years are more positive. Some years are, are, we struggle more. And so as you know, I am coming to the end of this year and, and um, we are coming to the, the end of this year as a church, we kind of look back at, you know, what, what is it that we've lost and what is it that we have gained um, and reflecting on how we might endure and grow um, from that reflection. Um, as church in general, the pandemic has changed the church. Um, I don't know how much... Uh, you pay attention to statistical data in the church, but the church was on this trajectory. Like the evangelical church, all churches were on this trajectory of, of people were starting to be disengaged in the life of a church community. And the, the, the trajectory was, you know, slight. But going up, that people no longer were engaged or were less engaged. They would come like once a month or, or whatnot. Um, and then the pandemic hit. Uh, and nobody was engaged. Churches dropped drastically in numbers. Um, but a lot of those people who used to be engaged in the life of the church are no longer engaged. So you can come to go to any church, really, and one Sunday will be a full Sunday. There will be a lot of people there, and we have this expression in our life together. And then the next Sunday you're going, where is everybody? Because people have now, and this isn't like a guilt a guilt trip. This is just our reality. Um, we have um, it is not a priority really anymore. For some of us, it is, and it's still like a positive attribute to like be a part of a community every week. But a lot of people will just say, you know, I just need church once a month, or I just need church once every um, couple of months, and they'll come, and and we'll probably see them in our life together and go, oh, they're back. And they'll be, I'll see you in two months. <laughs> um, and, and that's not a shift. And we might go, well, what's wrong with us? What did we do? You know, and I, I really, to, to be completely honest, I've internalized that too. You know, I was like, what? Oh, I must have said something or like they left. But really, it's because there's a lot that's changed in our world and in church and people have stopped engaging in the life, life of the community. And so we have to recognize that church um, if we're going into the future expecting the same, like, to fill this room up with people uh, every Sunday, that is a culture's going this way, and we're saying, you know what? I'm going to go right against you and right in front of you. And as a church, I don't think we necessarily want to engage in that, in that battle. Um, and so I think we have to find ways, how do we engage with others in our community. And in a, last year we said, here's how we want to engage. Our, our goal is not to fill up this, this room per se, um, but our goal is to engage with people in our community. And so we, we sought to find ways that we could be a part of our community and be in the community. And, uh, and here's Bradley, uh, you know. <laughs> Really excited that I took his picture. So we said, you know, we'll be at the Dogwood Festival. And so we had some stuff to get a give away, some coffee cups. Um, and we were there talking to people, saying hello to people, meeting people. Um, and that was our first, our first go at it. And then uh, we, were, we, we were a part of, uh, what's my, Meb and June, that's us at Meb and Juneteenth. Nobody so, was there. We just nobody was there. Yeah. <laughs> I just, this picture, all right, done. Um, yeah, we set up, we don't want to talk to people this time around. Um, so we were there, present at Mebin, Mebin Juneteenth, and, uh, and staked our ground there. Um, and then what's our next? Uh, we had um, 
you notice the theme here is that none of these things have anything to do with this space or Sunday. Um, that was on a Sunday, nobody actually. Was <laughs> nobody was there either, yeah. Um, so we had a Seder meal, Seder meal together at, at Woodlawn, something very different that Jackie helped us help lead and, and helped us be a part of. You can go on. I blessed some animals for the first time um, on a Sunday. Um, not in this church space. We, we in our community, we've eaten out in the community. I think we ate out so much this summer that pe- some people were like, do y'all eat out every Sunday? I was like, no. That's just you came on that Sunday. We prayed for each other um, at, uh, at the chapel uh, before um, Amy had her, uh, her surgery. Um, and you think, go back to that last picture. And you think about this past year and how much has changed and how much we've ebbed and flowed. Like, we're maskless in this space, but like, one year ago, we were all still masking and very, like, intentional, intentional about it. All right, you can go to the next slide. Um, we've baptized three kids in this. Um, and we also, Andrew and Becca, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a, naming a loss, but like this summer we had we had a big group of people move away, and so we we mourned their their leaving, but we celebrated that, and we um, bab- baptized uh, kids for the first time this past year. All right, so we've had a big year, um, a fruitful year, and a lot of this expression um, has happened. Not in this space. I know that in some ways, as a leadership team, and who's, uh, who's on the leadership team? Raise your hand. All right. Yeah. Look at those people. They're here. Um, uh, what is I told? I paid you. Did you get my check? Um, uh, and we talk a lot about space and how we utilize space. Um, but it's so valuable as a church that we continue this, um, this spirit of being visible in the community that we're not such a, so much a church that focuses on one hour um, on a Sunday morning. We also this year, we've hired a, a, child, care, a child care staff person, Piper, uh, who has been phenomenal and has done amazing in working with Literally half our congregation, um, the, the day, the first day that she was here, uh, she was greeting all the kids by name as they walked out. And I'm just like, all right, sold. Like, that's, that's what matters to us as a community. We're not trying to teach Noah's Ark to our kids. We're just trying to tell them that you're loved by God, you matter, and what great way to show someone you matter by, by getting their name. Um, so our community has, has grown. We do not look the same as a community as we did a year ago. And that is a beautiful truth um, to celebrate. Just a few weeks ago, we surveyed, and thank you for taking the survey, uh, the why be, we surveyed, in a way, the why behind what attracted people to this community. And a word that kept popping up over and over was the word community. Community. I am a part of this church because of community. Um, And I think that's important for us as a leadership team and as a church that we recognize um, that we try, we're not trying to um, be like the church down the street. I don't know what they do because I'm, I I have things to do on a Sunday morning. But what other churches do on a Sunday morning is, is for a lot of people, they entertain. And I don't speak negatively of that. Um, I guess I am when you say that. I am speaking negatively. But they entertain. Um, there's light shows. Some churches have fog machines. I really wish we had a fog machine. I'm going to be completely honest about that. Um, but our, our cell, in a way, is, as a church is not our music. It's not m- me. Um, I thought y'all were going to disagree with that, but you didn't. <laughs> um, it's that we're a community of people, eager and ready at whatever pace anybody wants to take to walk alongside one another's 
lives. And I think those are the values as we go into this next year that we have to hold on to as a church. And I say these words more so for me. Um, and sometimes we're like, you know, where is everybody? Where are the people in this community that are a part of this, that could be a part of this church? Or why isn't, you know, somebody in my life circle not a part of this um, community? And it's like I said before, because the days of every Sunday worship or people even stepping into a worship space um, are gone. And we have to kind of own um, that reality. And we are also, we, um, in, we're not going to speak too much into this, but we call ourselves a progressive uh, Christian community. And the numbers of people who consider them progressive Christians even engage in faith communities even less. And I name that to to name to us the value of what we offer in this next year is a continued presence in the community. It's that moment, um, y'all showing up to bless a bunch of dogs in in, um, the Medmen Community Park, I felt so weird. I had never done that before. I, and I tell you, I didn't want to be there. Like, <laughs> let's just be honest. And I'm like, Jason, why did you? But looking at people's faces as I like touch their dog, it just looked like one. I was like, man, I really treat my dog bad. <laughs> but people were like, oh, thank you so much. I'm like, sure. <laughs> I feel so weird right now. Um, but to them, they're like that should. We're a church in the community that took a moment out of our day to like say, you know what, your dog matters <laughs> to God and to us. And to that person, that meant a tremendous amount um, for us. And so as a church, as we evolve and we kind of like, wow, the world has changed, we recognize that. And so we're asking ourselves, how do we be more present and visible in the community That sure is a question that I'm asking um, myself. One of the things that has evolved among us is that we want to have community partnerships. Uh, Let me ask you this. Who is our community partner? A quiz. Benevolence Benevolence Farm. Um, And the idea is that we wanted to have a plethora of community partnerships, uh, but to simplify it and to say, and we're kind of starting that journey now, Uh, that we give 10% of every gift that comes in to our community partners, which is Yoder Elementary and uh, Benevolence Farms. Um, And we want to get to know, we want people who come into our community to know the community partner. And so they'll be here um, next week. Um, And then if you're here on Christmas Eve, we're giving our Christmas Eve offering um, to them so that, you know, Everybody that comes into the space knows, wow, there's an awesome organization in our community. Is there a lot of awesome organizations? Yes. Um, but we're just going to keep it simple um, for our benefit so that we can get to know really well the work that one organization is doing. So we need to be visible in the community, simplifying our community partners, um, and then also recognizing, uh, like I said before, this is not a pastor-centric work. Um, this is a collective work. Um, it would probably, obviously I can't do everything, and I don't want to do everything. Um, but there is value uh, every week to people doing different things. Somebody bringing in, Krishna brought in some strawberries. Um, she welcomed people. Uh, Gaddy doing the slideshow. Dave. The music, Don reading scripture, and we have people doing different things, not just for the sake of doing them, but what we do on Sunday is a recognition that this is a collective work. Like, we are doing, like, this church is not just my church, it's our church. It's something we do together. Uh, The word liturgy means the work of the people, not work of the one person 
but work of the collective body. And so as we, um, as I think about all those moments that we were part of the, uh, an expression in the community, I think of how different each group of people that helped out, um, which each of those moments, which made that expression of Story Church beautiful and, and meaningful. So I want to invite us into some concrete ways um, that we can continue uh, to be together in our work. And these are, these are uh, you know, concrete, I feel like easy and attainable uh, ways. One of the things is, is that there are a lot of people who, who still don't know about our community. Um, and so what if uh, you shared uh, on social media about this church to your community, to share like who we are as an expression of a body. There's something tangible. Uh, volunteer at a community event, or if you have an idea about a community event, to bring forth the idea um, that we can be expressed in, in the community. Uh, lead a small group. Uh, you have a book that you want to read. Um, I think sometimes we think big, but think, I, I want to read this book. Uh, what if I can get one or two people to read alongside me and to create a, a small group? Um, bring ideas to the table. Uh, give, give financially. Even if you think uh, gifts aren't significant, they are. Every, like, I really mean it. Every gift matters. Because this is a work about togetherness. It's a work about supporting each other. It's a work about showing up and, and being open to being surprised. So I want to take a moment because one of these community events, um, we got to meet uh, some amazing, amazing people. And that was really exciting uh, when we met Don and Tim at a Dogwood, Dogwood Festival. Um, I looked at Tim and I thought, oh man, they're out. They are uh, the... Alamance County is out, out for us. And I think Don asked me, are you reconciling? And I'm just like, oh, like, reconciling? Oh. I was like, yeah. I was like, like, she knows the inside. And I'm like, yes. We, like, I thought she was going to get, like, angry. Because we get those messages all the time. You know, all, not all the time, but, you know, people say we're going the wrong way or whatnot. And then um, just beautiful, beautiful family and, and, uh, and have become a part of our journey. So I've asked Tim to share a few, a few things about their journey and about their connection with Story Church. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to stand right back here. I'm going to actually pick this up. I don't know how that did that. Make sure it's a little plug. If i got to back up just a hair. So. And also, it's amazing... Um, when Jason asked me to speak, I said, uh, well, what is, the, what is the scripture this week? And then I read the scripture. I went, oh, man, I got to tie something into that. And, don't, and then I, I, I was really worried about it. So I, I went to Dawn. I, I go to her for everything, obviously. I said, hey. And she said, don't do that. Don't, don't try to do that. She said, just tell, your, just tell our story. You know, just tell her story and uh, just kind of bring it around. So uh, she's always done me right. So, uh, but my name's Tim Woody, and, and my wife Dawn and I uh, have lived here in Alamance County for about four years now. Uh, after my retirement in 2018, um, we bought some land and, and uh, we decided to uh, head west. It's about 60 miles, so we used to live in Wake County, so it wasn't too far for us. Um, uh, so this was not only a dream for us to do this and kind of go off into the country. Um, it was also very timely because in 2016, at the annual United Methodist Conference, uh, a vote was taken that resulted in, at least in my perspective, the church being a little less inclusive. Um, so the timely move allowed us to not only, you know, start our new life in a new area and build our build what we've been dreaming for, but also to uh, search for a church that we felt like better aligned with our spirituality and our our social our social beliefs. So um, so as we set forth to build this house, we also set forth to look for another church. Um, 
And after uh, a dozen or so church visits, uh, we became pretty discouraged, quite frankly. Um, uh, you see, um, we were very involved at the church that we were at in Wake County for many years, for over 30 years. Um, Dawn was, in fact, on staff there. She was a youth director. She took international mission trips. She took kids all over the world. Um, you know, I was involved in local and regional missions. We were very, very involved in that church. So, you know, it was tough to leave because we physically moved away, but we also felt like we didn't like the way this things were things were going. So, um, so uh, it was funny. Fortunately, we found Jason and we found others at the Dogwood Festival. I think you, I must have sent this to you. <laughs> And, and Dawn has a very good way of looking at churches because we were searching and she can kind of know how to cut through the descriptions and, and see, oh, okay, what are you guys all about? So yes, Dawn said, looked right at him and said, are y'all reconciling church? And I think everybody in the booth said, yeah, yeah, look, look at the back of our shirt here, you know. And so we were like really encouraged now, first time in a long time. <laughs> so, uh, so it was really nice. And uh, after... Um, after our first visit here at the church, I told I told Dawn, I said, uh, after that benediction prayer, I, I was sold because that kind of really resonated with me. And, and, you know, we'll say it in a little bit. You'll see it for those of you who have not seen it before or can't remember it. So um, we asked Jason, or well, I asked Jason to sit down with him and I asked him point blank, point blank, would you marry one of my kids? And uh, he said, yeah. And I said, okay. So we sort of got all that behind us and, uh, you know, allow us to move forward. Um, and basically said, okay, we, where do we sign up? We're, we're ready to do this. We want to become members. We want to transfer our membership. And we want to make it public. I think Jason was a little concerned, thinking a lot of people don't want to make this public. Some people kind of want to make it a... No, I think it's important. It's important to, to, to me and Don to publicly, you know, state that this is where we want to be. We're in it. We got skin in the game, and you know anybody wants to hold us accountable, feel free. So that was kind of our our take on that. So um, so here we are. We go from a uh, a church that we were so involved with a four million dollar budget. Now this is a huge church to a pioneering church, and and I didn't even know that term until Jason told us what a pioneering. We've heard of the word seeding a church, but starting starting from scratch. So I'm like. Uh, Wow, this is kind of scary, but it's very exciting also. Um, you, uh, you see, um, we felt like, Don and I both felt like we have something to, to contribute. You know, as you go through life, you start at that early stages, you're, you're kind of soaking it in and you're taking it, and then maybe in a certain stage of your life, you start applying it. And I think we've reached the point where we, we have something to offer. We want to try to help guide this thing through just like everybody else. So um, it's important important for us to continue that. The um, So anyway, I'm just reading my notes here, guys, so bear with me. Um, so as you know, and as Jason has alluded to, it doesn't happen by itself. This church and this community, this, uh, this space doesn't just happen. It takes work for all of us. But we all have our gifts, we all have our talents, and yes, we definitely need to provide our financial support. Um, this church wouldn't exist without that financial support. This leadership is looking for ways to better this church, to improve the worship facility, uh, have weekday meeting places, um, to have programming to support our children and our youth, um, and it takes resources. So I urge all of us, not just you, not just me, but all of us, to consider how we can be part of this success. Um, I'm learning how to give online for the first time, right? I'm having to go through the, uh, the portal and reoccurring and all that. So if I can do it, trust me, everybody else can do it. So well, we're learning that process. Um, and, and, and as I leave, I do want to remind you, I, do, I want to leave you with one quote, okay? And uh, this is sort of builds on the fact that I love our benediction. It says, this is a Margaret Mead quote. Um, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only way things ever get done. So, thanks.
just you to love each other and see